Around the year 500 AD, Benedict of Nursia, the son of a Roman nobleman, abandoned his studies and left home to escape the life of the city. Some 40 miles from Rome, he would be persuaded by a monk of Subiaco to live three years of his life as a hermit within a cave in the mountains to search for God and the truths of human existence. Before his death in 547, Benedict would establish 13 monasteries in Italy and write his influential rule of Benedict, which would prove to give birth to Western Christian monasticism. Some 1300 years later, in 1846, Father Boniface Wimmer and a band of 18 young Benedictines from Bavaria's Metten Abbey traveled to America. Later that same year, Father Wimmer and his companions founded the first Benedictine monastery in the United States at the rural St. Vincent's Parish in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Father Demetrius de Moronia and four fellow Benedictines left St. Vincent's and traveled west to Minnesota to provide for the spiritual and educational needs of German immigrants. In 1856, they arrived in central Minnesota and built the first Benedictine monastery in the state, the St. Cloud Priory, on the beautiful western bank of the Mississippi River. Seeking a more wooded setting, the Benedictines moved west of St. Cloud. Their Benedictine sisters helped to establish the town of St. Joseph and St. Benedict's Convent. The monks traveled further west to Lake Sagatagan, and in 1866, built what would be known as the Old Stone House, their first of many architectural endeavors, and the birthplace of St. John's Abbey. Abbot Rupert Seidenbush served as the first abbot of St. John's from 1866 to 1875. Under the leadership of Abbot Alexius Edelbrock, St. John's would build what would become the heart of the St. John's campus, the Abbey Church and Quadrangle using lumber cut from the St. John's forests and bricks made at the monastery from local clays, the building would prove to be the largest educational building west of Chicago, an unbelievable sight in the wilderness of central Minnesota. Following St. Benedict's rules of prayer and work, the monks and sisters of St. John's and St. Benedict's would build up their monasteries and reach out to the immigrants and native people in the area establishing churches, schools, convents, and hospitals in rural areas of Minnesota and the Dakotas. From this key role the Benedictines played in the early development of the state of Minnesota, to the more recent histories of Benedictines leading worldwide liturgical thinking, and Johnnies carrying on the Benedictine traditions and leading in their communities. In more than 150 years of work and prayer in Minnesota and around the world, Benedictines and alumni of St. John's have written a rich and endearing history. But how does a visitor to St. John's truly learn this history? The story of this place, the ideas behind this incredible place, the great people of this place whose legacies continue to influence the community and the world. Even if a visitor to St. John's is led by an astute and extraordinarily well-read guide, they will likely depart the campus impressed, but missing quite a bit of the stories of this place. But they are stories that should be told, and told on campus, visible to all visitors, as a welcome in the hospitable tradition of Benedict's rule. The first visit to St. John's is perhaps the biggest opportunity to introduce to prospective students, their parents, and other ambassadors to St. John's the rich and powerful history of this place. For returning alumni, 
visits to St. John's are a unique opportunity to re-engage and re-energize relationships with the community. The St. John's campus itself and the stories behind it are an opportunity to build community and to create a competitive advantage that will aid the long-term sustainability of St. John's. With the full support of the St. John's University Offices of Admissions and Institutional Advancement, the St. John's Alumni Association Board has recommended to the Abbey Design Committee that St. John's create, in the wise design sense St. John's is known for, a storytelling system that extends a Benedictine welcome to our visitors, providing wayfinding and history finding information that communicates more explicitly the heritage and culture of St. John's, the Abbey, St. John's University, and the St. John's Alumni Network. How exactly would this be done? Phase one of this St. John's Illuminated project has already begun with the goal of implementation by September 2011. The first phase of the project will adorn the walls of the main hallway of Sexton Commons with a collection of museum quality displays providing both a striking and informational tour through the history and heritage of St. John's. Through historic and contemporary images, interpretive information, an interactive kiosk and an online companion site, visitors, alumni, prospective and current students faculty and staff alike will all be invited to make a deeper connection with this place and be inspired by its heritage. In tribute to the enduring power of the St. John's experience, the Fireside Lounge in Sexton Commons will be renamed the Alumni Lounge and serve as a gathering point and meeting location for alumni and students alike, featuring the history, reach, and accomplishments of the Worldwide Johnny Alumni Network. Phases two and three of this project, slated for further development in 2012, envision history markers and kiosks on the campus grounds of St. John's, providing additional wayfinding and story finding guides for visitors. And in the Great Hall, the historic heart of St. John's Abbey, the telling of the Benedictine story. From St. Benedict and his teachings, to the early Benedictines in America, and the leaders of the last century who have helped to shape liturgical thought worldwide. By simply telling our story on campus, we create a warm welcome and deeper sense of place for all visitors. We create a powerful recruiting tool for admissions. We provide effective support for resource development. And we create a deeper sense of belonging to past, present, and future Johnnies, and all in the St. John's community. All these things can be realized by simply telling our stories of St. John's, as Johnnies have been doing for more than 150 years. Help us maximize the potential of the St. John's campus visit by illuminating the history, heritage, and ideas of this great community. Help us tell the stories of St. John's, please support this important initiative today.